you how to tell your own about it. Okay, let's just continue. Okay, so, whoopsie. This is what we're gonna do. Like I said, we're gonna have an hour. I'm gonna give you tips, techniques, and a bit of analysis of some outstanding South African radio um, pieces. Remembering that we can always go beyond the 30 second spot because we're not just now in a broadcast situation where we create a radio spot in advance. We can actually, um, you know, content, consumer generated content is very much part of the new way, but the same techniques, the same issues apply. I'm just, I'm in fact setting my producer's clock here so that I don't run over time. Okay, so we are now going to speak about this is the most important thing I want to tell you. Salman Rushdie said, Man is the storytelling animal. We are wired for stories. Never mind the Bible, never mind the caves that we sat around and looked at the flickering shadows on the walls. We are wired for storytelling for various reasons, which I will tell you, um, but I'm going to go through this real quick. If you don't believe Salman Rushdie, believe Steve Jobs, the late great Steve Jobs, who said the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation. Think about that. That was Steve Jobs. Remember that he told a story. We still know his story, even though he doesn't live any longer. We know more about his life and the way that he tied his values, his personal values into his brand. And that's actually where, we, where we're going to. There's a guy called Robert McGee who said storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world today. So if you want to sell something for 99 cents, give it a story. Nobody really people care about price obviously they do but if there's no story if there's no brand brand value in it um you're barking up the wrong tree um just very quickly want to tell you we never used to be able to speak millions of years ago we used to sweat we used to walk on all fours if you believe us the moment we started standing up on two legs and we started sweating out of our armpits we were able to say ah ooh, ee, which allowed us to be able to start to communicate I also want to tell you, and this was this is a construction of many, many years of looking. If you fall in love, that feeling you get, or if you take drugs, which I, of course, don't do, but the same emo the same hormones, the same chemicals are released in storytelling as they are released in love and drugs. They call it the angel's cocktail, cortisol, dopamine, and oxytocin. It brings awareness. It brings arousal and it brings action. And it probably goes back to our caveman days when we needed to know, did you see that big animal? Oh my God, it's coming for us. Run, run, or buy our stuff. So the same emotion, you have to raise emotion or cognition. In other words, you have to know it, you have to feel it, and then you have to act on it. That is kind of the, the, the theme of every story ever told. Um, so this is just a, a slide for when you get it so, so you can see since our ancestors crawled out of the swamp, we've been telling tales, soothing, exciting, impressing, resonating. This is a quote from an old guru, poke, provoke, confront and elevate. So actually stimulate. You don't have to tell everybody everything. John Hunt always says, close the circle. Let the, let the listener. And remember, you're talking to a listener. You're not talking to a mass of people. There's theater of the mind involved. It gives meaning. It remains in our species, the, the reason that we are not animals in the way that we have cognition. It connects, it's intimate, your best friend, it's mouth to mouth, it's theater of the mind, it's tactical. If we had time to go into what's happening in South Africa at this very moment, we would, but this was planned in advance, but you know what I'm talking about. It has the ability to transform the narrative of a relationship, organization, or brand story to address issues and challenges through, and this is important, metaphor and allegory. Shakespeare didn't say, um, I don't know, and then he died. He said, he said, out, out, brief candle, for example. That's a metaphor. We understand she's dead. So otherwise, if you, if you don't use metaphorical language, you really are in the banal space and you're not stimulating imagination. This is also just a reference for you. I'm not going to go through it now because we don't have time. But why do we listen to stories? If I tell you an anecdote, when I went out of my door this morning, I saw... Mm, and then something happened, and then something happened. So we, these are the patterns in our minds. We tell stories to little children. We didn't want to call Creatrix a brand story because everyone thinks we're talking about Little Red Riding, but we are not. We are talking the stories of our lives, the stories of our brands. People want to 
be engaged. It makes us human. It has evolved us to learn. Um, I've done a lot of conferences where they speak about give you the facts and you'll remember the facts. Give you a story, you'll remember the emotion, which is more likely to make you buy the stuff that is selling or the value that is being sold. This is very important, and I'm going to play you some spots. The spots I've chosen as examples today are in, in mother tongue. We are very committed to this because of what Madiba said. And it's if you talk to a man in a language he understands, it goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, it goes to his heart. We do a, we do a lot of drama storytelling, which is long form story, storytelling. And then we research it to see if the brand values, I'm gonna say it again, the brand values are being communicated. Okay, you might all be saying, where's my exercise, my writing exercise, I can't give it to you until I've told you all this, because creative without strategy is called art, creative with strategy is called advertising, Jeff I. Richards with one F. However, and I found this when, when I wrote my book, is that you have to have value in art as well. What are you communicating? What do you want people to feel? What do you want people to think? So before we even get in, I'm, I'm going to do the creative thing with you today. But if you don't have a, a sound strategy, creative, good creative comes out of strategy. And that's why I'm going to go the middle road with you guys this morning to talk about brand values, because you can't get your story unless you know what your brand values are. Um, this is just, here's some little tips and techniques. Jean-Luc Godard, the French director said, a story must have a beginning, a middle and an end, but not necessarily in that order. When you hear some of these brilliant radio spots, they start in the middle, tell you the beginning. What happened before that? What happened after that? So this basically is, is, is Aristotelian. You have to have a beginning, a middle and an end, even if you put them in a different order. This is also ex extremely important. And if we were in a room together, we would do a round robin. What if, and then, if you're going to do an exercise from, for us today, what if, um, I was gonna use a political example. I'm gonna use my book as an example. What if the wandering Jew was a woman and not just any woman, et cetera, et cetera. And then she was accidentally cursed with immortality. And then she died on the Praetorium floor. And then she came back to life. And then, and then, and then, and then. So the what if is your premise and the then is your rollout. And if you analyze any story, they usually have a what if and then embedded in it. This is 101 storytelling. There are many, many, many glyphs for this, but again, time is pressing. The exposition is how you set it out. The rising action is the requirement. Everyone, every single character in any single story wants something. Even as Kurt Vonnegut says, it's a glass of water. They must want something and they must be thwarted in that desire. The climax is what happens. In other words, how it, 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 it screws up or gets resolved, but usually there's a problem and then it reaches towards it. And it's an arc, it's a story arc. And again, good radio has a story arc in it because you want to know what happened. And usually, and sometimes, and mostly your brand positioning or your brand payoff is your, if you want to call it your climax. If you do this, you will get that. If you buy our product, you will feel sexy, uh, re restrained, redeemed, whatever. So again, for, for you guys who aren't writers, I don't know who's out there. For you guys who aren't writers, a story always has a story arc. Here is, a, here is I could speak for an hour on this slide. I'm not going to. I just want to credit Peter Christie, big chief talking bull. He's another storyteller who speaks of four elements. Again, we're talking radio here. Historical, biographical, allegorical, anecdotal. His, um, I'll give you, anecdotal is um, when, I, when I published my book, um, COVID was about. And because COVID was about, I had to do all sorts of things. I'm not going to go into the storyline, but um, I had to have a launch in the rain. Um, people didn't come. There was a whole little anecdotal story. If I want to talk historical, about my book. I want to talk about the 2000 years of history that I've used. I want to use my imagination because I didn't even as old as I am, did not live before 1959, but I went back into the history of, in this case, the Jewish people and anti-Semitism and feminism and patriarchy, which sounds all very boring, but I needed the background to give it the, the, the story oomph. Biographical, 
I was born in England. I didn't know I was white. I didn't know I was Jewish. I didn't know I was a girl until I came to South Africa when I was 12, et cetera, et cetera, which can touch your emotion. Again, I'm, I'm rushing through this. And allegorical. Allegorical for spirit and soul. Allegorical means the metaphor. The metaphor of what I am trying to describe in my book, for example, is actually of the spirit. I want to heal the world. I want to show people that they don't have to be oppressed. So all of these, and when you get, again, when you listen to this or watch it again this is also very Jungian you have the historical so you have actually you have mind if you're going clockwise mind heart soul body those are the four kind of aspects of our humanity and if you can bring a little bit of each of these I mean my book you can read as a fairy tale you can read as a historical um, alternative facts you can read it as a whole bunch of anecdotes strung together um, but if we actually go in and we will analyze a couple of, of um, radio spots that have won awards um, in South Africa to be able to apply this glyph to that. This is also, and this is, I, I know I'm going like the blazers, guys. This is huge. In the story, the king died and then the queen died. So what? In plot, the king died and then the queen died of grief. Why did she die of grief? What did he do to her? What was she feeling? There's a whole different feeling tone around story and plot. So storytelling, yes, but what is the plot? What is the point of the story? So a story is a series of events recorded in chronological order. You've got 30 seconds, 45 seconds. A plot is a series of events arranged to reveal the dramatic, thematic, and emotional significance. In our case, probably sales of a product. A plain story is history. A plot is someone telling the history. And in radio, we have a voice. We have, we have so many things at our, at our fingertips because it's the voice that carries those aspects of the plot. It's always cause and effect. You'll find that in any story. Narrative is usually about change, which in radio and in radio audio is I want you to feel differently to what you felt um, before I started telling you the story. So Mama Koo, um, which was, was a campaign that we did years and years ago, had a character who was called Mama Koo. Everybody thinks she always existed. She didn't. She existed to embody the brand values. And then she told a story which was shared from people who would write to her and speak to her about their, their lifestyle. Um, if I can tell you anything this morning that you come out with, um, and this is E.M. Foster, who was a, a novelist. And I mean, we take our storytelling from the great novelists. Value is the soul of storytelling. I think about this all the time. Value is the soul of storytelling, but value is the soul of good radio. And I mean, for you guys out there, I know there might be a lot of people who are radio um, producers and planners and station managers. We're talking about telling a story in a, in a, either in a pre-record or in a consumer generated content space value is the soul of storytelling so now i'm going to show you value this is just giving you an example of my company creatrix our brand story and I, this is, might sound kitsch to everybody but if you looked what i what i just did basically was i took c-r-e-a-t-r-i-x and said c stands for creativity r stands for respect i stands for innovation a appreciation t trust r relationship i innovation and x excellence so misspelled excellence. Why I'm saying this to you is that th this may look um, kind of arbitrary, but every single thing we do internally and externally reflects one of these values, one of these values. So now I hope that you've got a pen and paper ready because what I want you all to do at home, wherever you are, is you, and, and again, I wish I was in a room with people, there are, there are, we're going to do three ways of the brand storytelling today. You can either decide that you are the brand, you, your personal, Lynn Joffe, this is me, the storyteller. Or you can decide on your company as the brand, my company's Creatrix, that's my Creatrix brand. Or you can decide on a client brand so that you can apply it to work that you're doing at the moment. Could be government, it could be a washing powder, it could be your own rec radio company itself and I, what I want you to do and I'm going to actually yeah I'm going to actually stop for a couple of minutes 
How sound are your brand values? You can't tell the story unless you know what you're telling the story about. So I've given you a few extra ones. So I've, I've stolen these seven or eight, which you can use. I don't want you to think about it too much, but these are examples. Connection, commitment, passion. Well, I put passion twice, interesting. Growth, integrity. I want you to choose, and these are what I call big words. These are, these, these words you do not use in your story. These words are your brief, if you want to call it that. You might come back to this just now. Um, it's dry, but you can drink it, okay? Which I'm gonna use just now for, it's dry, but you can drink it is actually speaking about connection, if you think about it. Um, I'm loving it, McDonald's. I mean, yes, yes, it is. Um, think of a payoff line, think of a payoff line of a company that you already deal with or yourself, if you're an absolute genius, and choose a word, one. Choose one brand value. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do it, Take a pen, take a paper, and write down that brand value. Write down the, the, the product that you want to use, the brand. If it's you personally, like Lynn, what is my ultimate brand value? Probably is passion. I might mess up on things, but God, I try. Um, growth, you know, so I want you to just choose one. Again, we can communicate about this later. I want you to choose one, and I'm going to not stop speaking for 20 seconds if I possibly can. Choose a brand value. Right, write it down, draw a little smiley next to it or a frowny face, give it a feeling, tone, okay? And now I'm going to move on because I've got to finish this in 10 minutes. I made an acronym to help everybody with what has to happen in a radio script, okay? And I called it Speak, which was very clever, obviously. Um, and they are story and script, production, empathy and ears, actors, and the KISS syndrome, keep it simple, stupid. I'm, I've got a screen here, which is what I'm gonna tell you about this now, okay? What do you want your audience to do? What do you want your audience to feel, okay? So in your script, when you're using character, plot, empathy, all the things I've already told you, what do you want them to do as a result? Yes, buy my shit, obviously, excuse my French, but what do you want them to feel? The two are usually connected because if you don't feel anything, you're not going to want to buy anything, you know. Um, I'm not going to give you examples now, but when we did the Power of X, which was a, uh, it was a voting campaign, we actually sang, it's going to sound so corny to you, but we did a multilingual kind of song in every language with rap and um, quite, quite any experience. And then we put the phone number in the song, but it wasn't it wasn't corny it was part of the lyrics because we what we wanted them to do was phone to register so we made them feel something in the music and music is huge for radio um but you want them to feel something in order to act if there's an incentive what's in it for me obviously you have to give an offer but the script it all starts with the script and as as we all know you can't fit a 60 second um script into a 30 second spot so production and, and I mean, I'm, I'm a producer, I'm an insane producer. After you've, after you've written it, which is what I'm gonna ask you to do just now, you've got to time it, you've got to decide, and you've got so much at your disposal. Theater of the mind is huge. You can create an army battle. You can create um, someone sitting in an airplane, in a submarine. Your context is so much for what you can create in audio. So use imagination is key because that's what you do is you connect with the imagination of other people, okay? And I just said, write it as if you're the creative director of a sound movie, or write it as if you're writing a script for blind people. Close your eyes and imagine it. If I say to you, the pink elephant, you can't see, unsee the pink elephant. So use language, phrasing, dialogue. And remember this, that the ear evokes empathy. That's my E in speak, imagination and emotions, the mental images, the theater of the mind, Use music, not arbitrarily, but you know, if you can't say it, sing it, people say it. We we love music. We love to put our our brand name into the into the, the mouths of the target market, but not in a corny, corny way, in a genuine way. So um, and I'm not gonna speak brand South Africa at this point because we um uh, that's another whole meeting. 
Um, but if you would want to save the country now, what would your brand value be? It wouldn't be destruction, it would be creation. And maybe we can turn that around. Maybe we can, maybe we can, maybe we'll speak about that. Then of course, once you've written, and, and maybe I've been doing this for too long, it's not just about the script on the paper. How does it sound? Who's speaking it? What accent do they have? Are they local? Are they foreign? Even when we're writing in mother tongue, you know, are they twanging? Are they from the rural areas? Are they sophisticated city folk? Who is speaking to whom? So you can't, you actually, the director of a whole play that's in your mind. So you're going from your imagination into reality and of course stopwatch is your friend which is what i'm looking at now and you can cast it i mean when i started off as a little 20 year old we were casting janice honeyman and and you know the great great actors of their time there are now magnificent actors that that we that we cast caster semenya actually kate is my caster semenya the best caster in on in the country um, so remember that what you write is also going to be produced. And if you're a radio owner, I think DJ training and um, you know empathy with, the, with, with your target market is absolutely essential. Keep it simple, stupid. What I mean by that is don't do too many things in your spot. Just decide, that's why I said about the one value, one idea and follow it through. Use your elements of storytelling and align it with your brand value. That's my advice to you this morning. So for the first half, I'm not looking, um, haven't got time to, to, to look at questions yet, um, Tim will tell me, because now I'm going to show you, because we're kind of about halfway through, I'm going to give you some examples of outstanding radio um, to, to help stimulate your mind. So you all know about Savannah, not, we're not allowed to buy right now, but remember their payoff, and now listen to this. Some people really, really need to rest, Buffett. Like people who consult their goggles instead of their GPs. Rest, Mdasa. A castor oil can't cure cholesterol. Like people who use the internet to self-diagnose. Rest, friends. Why get your medical advice from the same place you get your memes? And like these guys who don't trust the vaccine, but eat baloney, chicken feet, little scorpo from street vendors, I'm man. Like people who live stream their best lives on a Thursday night, only to call in sick on Friday morning, rest bafo, because we see you. And people who are really sick, but come to work anyway, I, Lona, we don't need to see you. These people need to rest, and so do you. Take a sabbatical, win three months salary for three months rest. Savannah, it's dry, but you can drink it. Okay, how brilliant. Did you hear the pace? They wrote it, I think, I think it's a minute. I, I, I don't have the timing here. The one little piece of, of sort of ram's horn that sort of pulls you along emotionally and the way the copy is written is just, and it's dry, hello, dry humor. So you actually, so it ties into the dry brand value. And then I think take a sabbatical is just absolutely brilliant, but it's only at the end. Rest, to rest. The tone brings about what he's trying to say. It's slow you are brought in he's talking only to you he's talking only to you and it's a soft sell of the brand but there's a promo in there when sorry that's my dog take a sabbatical win three months yoko no so i wanted to give you that example i wanted to give you that example because i think that this ties in please stop it Will. I think this ties in brand with promotion, with an intriguing story. What he's actually done is taken two or three or four short anecdotes. Remember what I told you about anecdotes to actually show us, and, and this is a very <laughs> South African ad because it's, it, it's actually sending up the idea of rest. 
And if their brand value there is the connection they want to make with you, with their brand, I think they've done it brilliantly. Rest un fuerto. And then, of course, because it's a great ad, people will start using, we call it sort of claiming the generic high ground, to rest, to have a break in this time and, and, and win something that will give you even more of a rest. It's just a perfect, perfect circle. Okay, we're not going there again. And I'm not going to play you another one because of time. Okay, listen to this and let's see what you think. You know KFC and in fact, of course, finger link, licking good, I think has left the building because we can't lick our fingers anymore. This is also promotional meets brand. Listen to how they've used the music in this. You know, life will cut you up into slices, put you in a toaster and crank it up to 10. That's life. It's like arriving at a dog shelter to adopt a French poodle. But they won't let you have it because they're afraid it will overpower you. You walk into a massage parlor and the masseuse says to herself, oh, I can't do this anymore. Or how about that time you sat at the emergency exit, but the air hostess asked you to please move because they need someone strong enough to open the door, just in case. That's a burn. But you know what? When life shows you burns, show it some flames with a good burn from KFC. A 24-piece Zinga Wins bucket for just $134.90, only at KFC. So do you see how they've used, they've taken the music, they've given it a flavor for the target market, and they've used the idea of the burn as a pun, because zingers are hot, and the burn is hot. So they've given examples, and you don't have to have experienced everything that he speaks about, but he's asking questions, have you experienced the burn? If you've experienced this kind of burn, ouch, Here's the burn that will fill your tummy, make you feel good. So what I, what I, why I think this is a brilliant commercial is that they've also brought in the brand with promotion. You know, when, when I was a little girl growing up in advertising, it could either be a brand commercial or it could be a promotional commercial. Well, welcome to the 21st century. They don't have to be separated from each other. And in fact, this commercial wouldn't work unless there was an offer for you to take the burn and then... And I've always felt this, people are clever, people aren't stupid. So if you're going to take something like the burn, we're not talking about going in an ambulance to a hospital because you've fallen out of a fiery building. It's a, it's a metaphor, guys. It's a, it's a linguistic metaphor and it's how clever it is that they've taken the linguistic metaphor and the physical product, which burns you if you like hot stuff. And then listen to the sound design, which is why I'm going to ask you to write a spot which we're going to come back to at two o'clock and analyze. This is music meet, meet, meeting the message. He could have just spoken, but there was, he's almost, his audience is inside the spot itself because the, 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 the music people are, use, are, are in a sense responding. It's called call and response. That's what gospel music is. So it's call and response and he's speaking like a preacher. So it actually tips so many emotional boxes. So I wanted to give you that as, as a concept. Um, I'm going to do three more and then we're going to talk about what we do after that. Okay, I'm not going to give you another one because we don't have time. City Lodge. Okay, guys. City Lodge, there is, a, there is a translation at the bottom. I want to bring this up about mother tongue because we always say, you know, let's do English and then translate it. By conceptualizing this, this is a specific, <laughs> it's maybe not appropriate for today, um, given the political situation, but we're not political. We're talking about, and, and the, you guys who can speak Zulu will get this much better than we who are, you know, gangane, gangane Zulus. Um, the real cost of being a Zulu, here it comes. Never more appropriate. Mm. Okay, so mm. Okay, so mm. Okay, so okay, so mm. Okay, okay, so mm. Okay, so 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 okay, so mm.
How brilliant, guys. So this was created with the culture in mind. The, the, the fact that the backing vocalists in that kind of fake township or, or kind of almost kofifi way are responding to him, it's got a similar concept to the previous one. But what he's doing is he's sending up the culture. So Makoti, the new bride, has gone home to, to sit on a sponge and wash for her family when she could actually be at City Lodge. That's quite a radical thought if you think about tradition, but the way that he speaks it, and it's a long spot, it's entertaining, guys, and you're going, what is this all about? But the punchline, like remember I told you about the climax, is if only you'd decided to stay at home, you could have had this beautiful room at a low cost. So it's actually culture, it's culture changing, it's revolutionary. And the fact that it is, in, it, this could only really, really work in Isizulu. But it's it's and it's wonderful that 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 the that the mother tongue cultures are starting to come up and win awards and be cheeky because if you don't understand it if you don't know what mahala hyperpigmentation for mahala it's hilarious and it's not you know you might offend the Zulu king or somebody like that but we're in a modern culture and I think that we're catching up and remember that advertising reflects culture and creates culture so don't be afraid of using the culture also. This is a long, a longer spot because it's entertaining and the guy isn't rushing and the women aren't rushing. But if you listen to, again, the music and the words fuse together like halva and honey. So um, this one, I'm sure you all aware. I love this. If you if you listen, OK, Net Florist, just incidentally, the creative director of this spot is also the voice of Harold just incidentally, so don't be afraid to cast yourself if you need to. This is a Mother's Day concept, but what I, why I'm showing you this is we know about, or you've heard the spots. This is now an angle on the campaign again. What is your brand value? What is your brand value? Listen to this. Okay, this is to my all my beautiful children. You know, I've just come to realize that I'm still with all the damn dogs. All of you moved out, and I have to make sure that these dogs go for a walk. I've got to make sure that these dogs it gets picked up every day. This Lola of Nadia is so sturdy. She doesn't just want the pellets that's already expensive. I have to mix it with some gourmet food. No, men, you guys must come feed your dogs. How did I end up with all the dogs? <laughs> Kiddos, mommy deserve more than just a day. So spoil her more often with gifts from netflorist.co.za. It's the thing least you can do. Okay, sanitize so matches sanitized smooches now if you listen to the production quality of that i think they deliberately made it sound like it was coming from a phone it was fuzzy there were uh, beeps over the swear words then the announcer used the beep in other words the announcer and the, the the character are connecting on something and i think sanitized smooches is just very 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 clever for this COVID age we all know it doesn't mean you're going to French kiss your mother. We just realized that here's a woman frustrated as hell. Her children have left and we can all relate to this. Even if you're not a mother of children or a dog lover or anything, there are, there are, and the other thing is when you get a very good idea, a good idea based on the brand value, it's got legs for years and years and years. 
some of these, I'm not mad for some of these net florist things, but when they hit the mark, they are absolutely out of this world, brilliantly gorgeous. Remember this as well, character, 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 character. You in an agency or in the radio, you might get sick of this character. The audience isn't. I want to hear from Harold. I want to know what Harold's got up his sleeve next time. And the fact that he might be a gay white man. So let's live with it. We're in a diverse society. Okay, okay this is too much. Um, okay, I'm going to play you. I'm going to play you two things. I'm going to play you this just because of where we're at at this moment in time. This does a little kind of almost if this is the right one. Okay, I'm going to play that second. This is this is actually for all the South Africans in the room. Okay, we wrote this a few years ago. Um, because South Africa was talked about alive with possibility, if you remember the time. But I just want you to hear it. It's it's kind of a little commercial break before we go into the next phase. And in a way, my, this might even be nostalgia, but it could also be the hope for the future. So it's just my little message for you today. But listen, listen to this. It may not be appropriate for this day and age, but it was once. And we love South Africa and we want her to rise. <laughs> Cause you want to change that you want to be Cause you want to change that you want to be Okay, um, that actually makes me cry now <clears throat> because we were and we were so alive with possibility and we still are. We're just living through a really difficult time, but, and I'm not trying to be cute about this. It just kind of touched me in the heart. Um, we can get back to this. I, the reason that we, if music touches your emotions, music touches the heart in a way that nothing else does. That was, those were the, if you like, the payoff lines at the time. Um, and I just wanted to play you that given where we stand at the moment. And I'm going to go from one extreme to the other, to um, which is absolutely brilliant. Again, it's not in English. So those of you who are not au fait, um, there's, there's a, an idiot board for you. Completely on the other side of what Brand South Africa has been doing. And it sounds like this. Where's it gone? Oh, dear. Where, where? Oh, am I going backwards? Maybe? Okay, sorry. It should be, yes. Listen to this. Listen to the production quality. Listen to the dialogue. Listen to the characters. Listen to, you don't know what's going on at first, and you get pulled into the story. Here it comes. play your part brand south africa inspiring new ways isn't it brilliant so you start off and you hear that echo what they <laughs> he's dead 
They're both dead because they drank too much, but they pull you into the story, the way that the characters, the, the echo, the, the confusion of the dead guy. You know, you could say, oh, well, you know, don't take, don't mock the dead. But if you don't, in a sense, show that humor and show what happened, and we can all relate to that one drink too many. So you can also see that going from a, a big, beautiful, anthemic jingle or, or, or signature tune that maybe was appropriate for 10 years ago, now we're worried about people well, dying on the roads from, from too much drink. But remember this, remember the story. So that story started in the middle. You didn't know where they were. And then they show you the end, and then they show you the payoff, which is please don't drink and drive, basically because we are a country who cares about our people. But I think it was a brilliant story. Infection. And the last one I'm gonna to show to you, oopsie, is, is actually my favorite. Again, this is not in English. And it's interesting because, you know, English is my mother tongue. I have an appreciation and a sort of very basic working knowledge of other languages. But this, this particular spot could not have been done in any other language. I take my hat off. This is a combination of story, sound, value, promotion, if you would like to call it that, and brand. Guys, do you know? So, on the matter, peer is the, the big Lani English word for it. Did you? I'm going to play it again for you because. If you listen to the language, to the clicks, to the to the way that sound, you know, onomatopoeia is saying in English, you'd say sploink, but nothing ever sounds like a sploink. Listen to the way the puddles are used. Listen to the way the story is used. Uh, to me, this is the ultimate fusion of what can happen in radio. The voiceover, the sound engineer who must have, they must have crafted this for days to make the, the voice sound like the sound effect they obviously you know cheated it in production to make the sound effect sound like the voice i just want because this was i was was knocked out by this i think it's won a bunch of international awards but listen look at look at the words because you you know you non mother tongue speakers were maybe taken a bit of back from that listen to the production quality i'm going to play it one more time <laughs> Did you, did you see how theater of the mind was enhanced by the sound effects that were part of the voice? I mean, there was a, a little guitar doing in the background to give it a bit of atmosphere. But to me, that is the ultimate, ultimate in, in, in audio storytelling. So in the few moments that we have left, I've given you, and I'm gonna go back now if I can to, my kiss my speak file okay and what i'm come on yeah so in the 12 minutes we have left and, I, and we can maybe take a, a couple of questions what i would like you to do and that's what we said i want you to choose your value choose your brand and then i want you if you dare to write to write a physical radio spot or 
promotional spot or whatever you want to call it. We don't even call it spot anymore. A piece of writing using story, using production, using ears, actors, and the simple concept. You can do what you want with this because nobody's going to judge you. And when we come back at two o'clock, I would like a couple of you to read the spot. In other words, act it out. Just incidentally, you have to, as a, as a radio spot writer or a radio writer, you have to be able in a way to act out your own. You have to excite your listener who might be your client um, with things like dialogue. I, 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 I do this I'm very often on, on, on Zoom now where I'm now playing 19 characters for, for, for the client to be able to understand it. But what I want you to do is remember the principles of this. If you, if, you consider, if you consider all of these spots, all the climaxes were brand orientated. So in, in the Savannah one, it was rest because it's dry, you can drink it. In Nissan, it was, if you've got this car, you can avoid all of these difficulties. In the KFC, it, 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 it might sound easier to be able to write some music into it. It isn't always. But remember, in, and in, in TV, they do this all the time where they choose an existing song and then illustrate it. I, I remember um, only you, da, da, de, 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 de. it was a little boy um, giving out Valentine's Day um, cards to every girl who walked up the stairs. We don't have that in radio. So a lot of the time that, you know, a, a, a music is not a concept, but music can enhance a concept. The way that you decide to cast, because it's brilliant, you can cast anyone you want. You know, if you can't actually get some famous Hollywood actor, um, there was a thing with um, uh, James Bond at one point that some, everyone was trying to imitate Sean Connery and then Sean Connery sued them, but it, don't worry about that. I want you to create something with a plot. I want you to be able to time it to decide how long it lasts. And I want you to use one of these um, ideas, if you like, or categories of archetypes as we call them. <clears throat> so you can create it as, you know, those two guys in, 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 in hell, the, 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 the play your part, the two guys who are, Mfueto is, has actually already died. If you decide on your value and you decide how you want to get them to that value, you use the storytelling techniques. But the trick is, I don't want you to use that value. The value word will never appear in your script because it's too lani and it's too strategic. Um, often when I get um, briefs from clients and then we, you know, it's a strat word, what we call a strat word, you can't have created without strategy. So in a way, you write yourself a little brief. Who's it for? Where's it going? What's it telling? What's the value? What do you want them to do? And then you use some of these little tricks that I've given you to decide how it works. So if you want to, I mean, I, I could go on and apply this little glyph to everything we've spoken about. Um, exposition in the Nissan ad, some, he, some guy's going through this terrible journey on a matter peakly. Um, it's getting more and more difficult, but if you were in a car, Shui, shui, shui. I wonder if the inspiration for that, because the name of the actual vehicle is onomatopoeic, if you see what I mean, shui, shui, shui. The falling action and the conclusion is basically, this won't happen to you if you use this product, so buy it as such. It's, it's, not, it's not said. And if you are all sitting out there and going, what the hell is she talking about? This is the one slide I would give you. What if? So what if... We were under COVID and everybody was exhausted and we've got this liquor that nobody can buy, um, but they will buy it one day. And what if we give them time to rest? And then we give them examples of how to rest. And then we come up with, what about, a, what's it called, a vacation? What's it called even? This, this one here, um, it's so clever. Yeah. A a, sav a savatical. Now, you could say nobody will understand the word savatical, but you will if you connect it to rest and you connect it to you're going to try and some what you're going to try find something you'll just run away from when you do because savatical, sabbatical. It's not that far a stretch. It's dry, but you can drink it. So, what is the tone 
of your advertising. You can decide this now. You can decide to do it for yourself. You can decide to do it for a, in other words, your brand self. What do you, it's, it's, it's a deep question, which is why we're giving you a couple of hours. Who are you as a brand? I've had to separate Lynn, the brand, the author, from Lynn, the creatrix, Floozy. But what actually ties them together, my, my, my value is storytelling. Um, but what's underneath the storytelling is change. And what is underneath the change is healing. And, and I discovered from my novel that I, you know, I want to heal the world and change the world, but I can't tell anyone that because they're going to put me in, you know, uh, who am I? But my tiny little contribution to the world is it doesn't have to be like this. We don't have to be behind the veil. We don't have to be um, second citizens, um, whatever, whatever. I'm not going to go into my whole feminist thing. But when I come into advertising and I've got to use my same value, my value pertains to the women who are my directors. The value pertains to people have got COVID. We can't go out this week. Where, where are my brand values operating? So in the five or four minutes that we have now, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna ask if there are any questions because um, I haven't even looked at the chat. I don't even know if there's anyone there. I could be just speaking into a void. Does anybody have any questions about what they need to do for two o'clock. Just shutting the door. Is there anybody out there? Okay. Um, all right then, there's nobody would any, yes, here's a chat. Uh, Conrad, oh, hi, Conrad. Um, Lynn, are brands scared to repurpose radio ads online? That's a very interesting question. Um, I, you know, I'm such a radio floozy and, and we're starting to bring content, if you like, with visual because people like visuals. Um, I don't know the answer to that and I actually am very curious to, to find out about that because the internet is so visual, 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 visual. We've worried for years that, you know, we've got nothing visual to show. So now we take pictures in the studio or, um, you know, radio is an audio medium. The internet is a visual medium. But for example, like the Nissan, the Nissan ad I just played you, um, has got a little um, kind of wave file going on and the translation underneath, which is necessary for it to do because otherwise nobody will understand it except the Zulu speakers. So I think that keyboard warriors, yeah, it's interesting because now everybody can feed back. Whereas on radio, you can't phone and say, I thought your ad sucked or your content sucked, which they could. Um, and so, so yes, it's something to, to definitely look into. And then Paul, hey Lynn, as a newbie broadcaster or radio host, how absolutely essential it, is it for me to have a brand story? Ha, 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 you have to. Um, you maybe don't necessarily have to tell it to everyone, but I think you have to tell it to yourself. So in other words, now this is a whole separate discussion, vision, vision, mission, values, which any brand, in other words, if you're going out there as a human being, you are the brand. You are the brand, you are the children. So, so when I started, I didn't care because I was just writing copy in a dark room locked up with an art director. I mean, no one knew who I was, nobody cared, but we're now in the internet age. So say, having published a book, an actual novel, and, and being a floozy at Creatrix, we have been speaking for, for since COVID began about how we present ourselves as a group of people with our brand values. We're still discussing it and I've been scared, I've been scared of the storytelling business because it sounds again like Hansel and Gretel, which it isn't. So your story is your story, and Paul. How did you get there? What were your, okay, we've got a three, that's excellent. Very good timing, you see. Um, I think, you see, I was, I was caught between doing this as a writer's workshop and doing this as a brand storytelling workshop, but in, in, in a sense, they are the same. So if you come back at two, I would say to him, Paul and King Solomon, Benny, if it is really you and Conrad and all of you guys, write yourselves, write yourselves a story. If you can't get into the value business, if it's too much because it took, you know, I've, I've left out a whole middle piece, which is go within, find something 
that defined you as a human being, if you, if you, if you can't get into the brand story. So um, my father slapped me across the face when I was eight because he'd built a bicycle for my brother that belonged to the next door neighbors and he was ashamed of it. And I told my brother that the bicycle was secondhand and he clapped me. I mean, that's an overshare, okay. What I realized at that point was that the world wasn't in as I, saw it and I have <laughs> pointed out wrongdoing for the rest of my life because it was a very unfair club okay and daddy's dead now and you know my sister's not listening so let's find something in your life that made you who you are today so if, if the rest of you are still listening we've got one minute and 40 seconds left if you can do the brand value do it my brand value is probably to to really you know milk it down fairness unfairness drives me crazy so political unfairness personal unfairness lies i can't bear any i'd rather tell the truth and see the consequences so if you want to do it for your own 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 self go back to your inner child find an age and a place where you were when this event because we all lost our innocence somewhere along the line and it always makes an interesting story so if you're not getting the whole idea of value because it's a difficult one. It's, it's, you need strategy, nee, 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 nee. but go into your own inner self, your own inner child, find the story that defines you. So, and then write it in a radio spot way. You can have, you know, I would have the sound of the bicycle, you know, and then there was another part of the story and so on and so on and so on. And then I got taken to the Albert Hall and introduced to Segovia and nothing ever got solved, but I had to solve it. I was the one who had to take my value into the world. And 150 years later, I, I hope that I've done that. We've got 30 seconds. I would love you to, re to respond to us at two o'clock. I will give you feedback. We will do analysis and the, and the, uh, the, 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 the piece, the, the, the presentation will be available for you via Radio Days. And I would like to thank them again for the seven seconds we have left to all of our sponsors, to my darling Creatrix girls, done. See you at two o'clock. Podcasts and more, visit radiodaysafrica.co.za. You fucking fucking.